If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. There's a very common phrase that we hear about narcissists, and that is people will say, oh, those narcissists are totally full of themselves. You ever heard somebody say that? You've probably thought it many times over yourself. Interestingly, when we talk about someone who is full of themselves, simultaneously, we could also say that's an empty person. <laughs> it doesn't seem to make sense. They're full of themselves, and yet at the same time, they're empty. And it's because these individuals are operating with a manner of living and a philosophy of life that's completely backwards. Uh, they're broken adults. They're constantly seeking for evidence that, uh, that says that they have worth or uh, that they're a somebody. And you'll notice that they're hardly ever satisfied. Have you ever known a narcissist to be truly content now, sometimes they can be smug, and sometimes they can give off the impression that uh, that says, yep, I've won, I'm at the top of the, uh, of the stack here. Uh, they can have arrogance, but none of that is, in, is an indicator that says that they are truly full of the things in life that, uh, that bring you to a place of contentment. Um, just, just slow down long enough to think, you know, why does this person never make any kind of effort to get to know me? Or what's the deal with all their criticism? Are they just never satisfied? And and their hair trigger anger and that uh, ongoing uh, uh, undertow of agitation and annoyance and irritability, what's that all about? Do these people really think that belittling other individuals is a really good way to live? All of that implies that even though they're full of themselves, they are empty when it comes to really understanding uh, what a good, healthy life is all about. They're takers. Think of that. The implication is I have to be filled. They're consumers. They're needy. They're demanding. Give me, give me, give me. Uh, they're constantly on the prowl because they're looking for you to fill them up, even though we say that they're full of themselves. Uh, truly, they are empty. Now, in their minds, they believe that worth or value or significance lies in direct proportion to your lack of worth and value and significance. Think that one thing. Uh, think that one through very carefully. That's a that's a very strange way to live. But they're constantly putting you down so they can elevate themselves. But that again implies that there's nothing on the inside that they have. Therefore, they have to take from you to uh, give themselves evidence that they're a somebody. And uh, this is uh, it's a crazy way of li uh, of living. And, and I want you to understand this is not just something that they arbitrarily fell into. There, there's a reason that they approach life with this sense of emptiness. Now, I want to run through a little bit that it can help you understand what's really going on inside of them so that you don't get pulled into all the game playing that tends to accompany that kind of mindset. Why are narcissists so empty from the inside out? First and foremost, we can go way into their backgrounds and then we can bring it all the way up through their adult years and recognize that narcissists presume that you build your significance, you build your sense of satisfaction upon evaluations. They're constantly in an evaluative mindset. Who's best? Who's worst? Uh, this is mediocre. This is outstanding. And so they're looking for all sorts of indicators that say, well, uh, I get the best evaluations. They, they want to have the best looks or they're uh, impressed by materialism or uh, 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 people that have status. They want people to know about their achievements. Whenever you engage with them when, uh, when in discussions regarding opinions or ideas, they're constantly in a competitive one up, one down kind of mode. That's all because they have this evaluation. 
high, low, better, good, I made an A, you made an F, that kind of thinking. And uh, that drives them heavily going all the way back into their early years and they never have gotten away from that kind of thinking. That being the case then, uh, their, their need to be uh, uh, evaluated highly implies, well, the best way for me to know that I am, uh, I have the high evaluations and I, I need to have somebody that I compare myself to who's lower than me. And that's where you come in. And so they, they, they have this need for high evaluations and, and when they can find all sorts of evidence that you do not have, the correct evaluation, somehow or another, that makes them better and that uh, gives them their sense of well-being. It's very externally based. And as a result, they, they uh, then convince themselves that the best way to be a somebody is to have clout, is to have power, which is why they tend to gravitate toward all sorts of behaviors and attitudes that uh, imply aggression. Um, the, the, that's their anger and that's them uh, trying to uh, have the position where they can be the dominant one. And it's interesting, these individuals, whether it's in entertainment or elsewhere, they're drawn towards uh, themes of power and dominance and uh, being overbearing uh, in organizations. They want to be the one that has the final word. And uh, whenever you're having discussions, their opinion is the best one. Clout. Power is where they get their sense of well-being, and it's all uh, based on uh, them comparing themselves to your lack thereof. Now, that being the case, you can see that uh, with, with this evaluative, comparative, competitive mindset, they overlook the need and the necessity for analytical thinking. When was the last time a narcissist slowed down and asked something like, What's going on inside of my anger? Why do, I, why do I go to that so easily and so readily? They don't think that way. Or uh, when was the last time they, uh, they thought, you know, who gave me the right to be so judgmental? That's not appropriate. And so they, they don't think through those kind of things. They don't have that kind of analytical thinking. Or uh, when was the last time they thought, you know, instead of me blaming other individuals for the problems that I have, what do those problems teach me about me? How can I learn? How can I grow? Uh, they're too busy trying to compare themselves to you and elevate themselves in this uh, competitive kind of mindset to go into that kind of space. And so in the end, because they're building their sense of well-being upon all of these uh, issues of one-upmanship and superiority, they're never satisfied. And, and they're constantly finding evidences that says, you people out there have disappointed me one more time. And, uh, and they keep trying to find the next person that can give them their satisfaction, which is why they have so many broken relationships. It's the emptiness that they carry on the inside of themselves that causes them to have such uh, trauma and, and drama and difficulty in their engagements with other individuals. Now, knowing this about narcissists, there are certain key takeaways that I hope that you and I can latch on to so that we don't get pulled into uh, the, uh, uh, the the back and forth flow that they want us to join in with them on. Uh, let's, let's establish first and foremost, a gratifying life is not built upon diminishing other people. Now, that seems to be such an obvious truth but it's a truth that narcissists just simply don't seem to uh, catch on to at all. Or uh, in addition, we'll also say external evidences of superiority come and go. They, they ebb and flow, whether it's uh, the looks that you carry, you know, the older you get or the achievements, the, there's always somebody that's going to do better or being connected that can come and go. And, and so that's not a real good foundation to build your sense of well-being on. Uh, in addition, we'll say, uh, actually, uh, rewarding connections and re a rewarding way of life is built upon authenticity. That's a word that they don't, they don't get into at all. Being real, being open, being honest, acknowledging both pluses and minuses within yourself. 
And then we'll even take it further. Intimacy or relationship closeness is built upon knowing the pluses and minuses about one another and accepting each other in the midst of, the, uh, of all of that. That's a concept that they uh, never did learn because they're so busy worrying about their evaluative uh, status. Uh, actually, psychological emptiness, and this, is, this goes back to that paradox, is, uh, is overcome by emptying yourself of your false self, by emptying yourself of that false egotism, and instead filling yourself with love and goodness, and decency, and honor, and, and, and recognizing the best way for me to find my sense of well-being is to help you find yours. Uh, that's, a, that's a form of decency that they don't understand, and you're hardly ever going to find a narcissist that can go into that kind of space and stay there for any long period of time. Now, all of this stuff that I'm mentioning to you about their emptiness or uh, how to overcome it, They'll either say one of two things regarding this. One, they may say, I already know that, but they don't. Their life doesn't give evidence of that at all. Or they may just say, that's stupid. And so that being the case, I'm hoping that as you watch and observe how they bring so much emptiness, that you're going to see that you're a player on their stage. But as they try to blame you for all of the, the hurts and difficulties they uh, carry on the inside, it's not about you. It's about their lack of, uh, of ability to come to terms with uh, what they uh, miss on the inside and from the inside out. They can hardly ever say, you know, I have a lot of work that I need to do for my own personal growth. That being the case, uh, they have such a hunger for you to give them supply that they're just not able to go into that reflective and pensive way of life that can ultimately take you to a place of peace. That, that's just not something that they possess. And I hope the video such as this can give you a good insight about what you're dealing with and the and knowledge is power. And the more you're able to see this and understand it, then the more you're able to make plans accordingly. Uh, if you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to uh, hit that and the notification that, uh, bell to go along with it. We'll keep more videos coming in your direction. If you have a need for therapy, and many times when you encounter these kind of situations, that would be something that would be highly appropriate. We have a sponsor who can take you to a whole team of licensed, professional, experienced uh, therapists who can help you sift this out. It's an online counseling service or therapy service, and, uh, and uh, the link is below, and I'd strongly encourage you to go there and seek the help that you uh, could so well use in dealing with this kind of situation. In addition, I also have video courses, This Is Me and Free To Be, uh, that it goes into teaching people how to have proper boundaries and how to find yourself uh, regarding uh, the narcissist and the controllers in your life. We have my books and other resources below. Narcissists, they, they come across as being full of themselves, but they truly are empty. And the more you're able to see it, then uh, I'm hoping you can say, you know what? If you're looking to me to give you supply to fill yourself, uh, I can't do it. That's, that's something you have to find for yourself. And in the meantime, I'm hoping you can focus on you being a person that does understand uh, ingredients like dignity, respect, and civility. And in doing so, it can take you to your place of peace.